uh, your messages. Now, don't forget the answer machine is live and available. If you want to leave a message on it, here is that number one more time. After that, I'm going to play our live broadcast from Phonic FM that went out into the Exeter region this morning on FM. Our phone lines are now open. Call us now on our London studio number 0208 133 5170. Calls are charged at your standard rate. Calls from mobiles may cost more. Please dial carefully. Lonely without the boys, though. That's the only problem. Well, they're here for me. I've got, of course, Chris and Will, and we just love, we love to catch up. It's one of my just most cherished uh, fantastic <laughs> opportunity. Let me tell my listeners what we're doing, folks, because what we're going to yes. do is broadcast this on my live show. So I come each year to bet. This is my 38th exhibition, and I come wow. each, each year and I broadcast a live show at 3 o'clock on my radio station. And the listeners are typically uh, educators, parents, policy makers, folks that have an interest in education and IT. I interview people from the show floor. I interview VIP guests. I didn't get the Secretary of State for Education yesterday because she was late. And uh, when she went on stage, the audience got up and left. Bless them. Bless them. So (laughs) things are not good here. (laughs) <laughs> at the Palace of Westminster, really, really sad. Anyway, let's get the guys in. So I'm going to broadcast this later on, and we're hooking up, for my listeners, folks, we're hooking up live with a brilliant, one of my favourite radio stations, Phonic FM, and they do some marvellous work, and I love listening to the station, and I've got two of their presenters with me here in London at the Bet Show. Of course, I've got Will. Hello, Will. Can I say hello? Hello. Excellent. And, of course, got Chris. Hello. Excellent. And we're here and we're having a fantastic time, JD. You are. It sounds like, uh, you know, it's a, a party going on down there. Well, it's busy. We have over the three days, we have about 35,000 visitors, mostly educators, uh, policy makers, uh, leaders, school leaders, education leaders, university leaders, uh, lots of students here as well, particularly busy. We weren't sure what was going to happen today because Thursday we did have a train strike scheduled. And, oh. that, and that would have <laughs> impacted on our numbers significantly yesterday was really busy and so we thought well have we foregone the burst in traffic on the Thursday because everyone's moved to Wednesday but no as you could hear the evidence is on the airwaves it's busy it's delightfully busy so typically about 10,000 people come to the show uh, it, it's, it's not, these are not studio conditions for which I can only apologise, but it's great to catch up as well. So uh, it's just, I'll just ask the two, two guys here, Will and Chris, what, what they've been up to, what they've seen at the show floor. It is the world's biggest IT and education show, uh, and it's everyone who is anyone is here showing their new stuff. And, and Will's a real big fan of everything technology I and mean, he's an uber geek really and you won't mind me saying that really no, no, what, what, no, what have no. you seen that's really caught your attention um i'm going to going to concentrate on the catch box because the higher education world has discovered bet i think this is the third year there's a head by bet as part of the show but it's 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 got a scale now there's definitely more more interest in it but the catch box is is a sort of throwable microphone so it relates into radio and I, would, I was just checking with you, Russell, beforehand. I think there has been a teddy bear microphone. Well, we have, and we've used these in the primary school really well. It's, it's a good control mechanism. So the, you know, if you teach a class of 30 kids and you're throwing some question and answering activity around, you want only one person to speak. Uh, and you basically throw the teddy bear around and the one with the teddy bear speaks and there's a microphone in the teddy bear which you capture the sound of a particularly difficult room and children don't have to project their voices uh, and that's part of the magic of radio as well because of course radio if you're using radio in a school it's like an invisibility cloak you can't necessarily be seen unless you've got a camera in the studio which some of our bigger brothers and sisters on the bigger national stations kind of do because it's a marketing exercise for them but for us in school settings we want to hide the identity of the children for their own protection and for their own safeguarding safety if you like and radio gives them an opportunity to speak so it's using that same concept as well yeah we've had teddy bears for a while you're talking about a cube here aren't you it's a cube yes yeah, that's it's, more. it's not it's, yes yeah, so it's 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 not exactly the same as a primary school but it, it confirms my idea that the, the university's 
could use a lot of the same techniques that Bert has oh, known yeah. about for a long time. Yes. It's nice to have them here. Where have you been? That's what I'd say. We're, we're, <laughs> thanks for joining in. Better late than never, but you well, know, yeah, that would no, be... Well, eventually they'll do a study of it all and they will have something to contribute, I'm sure. That would be really good as well. Uh, brilliant. Chris, what have you seen on the show floor? Um, well, yesterday I was just having a brief look around. Today I've seen the OrCam, which is a tiny little camera which reads things to you and it also charts your progress through reading and I thought that was really good. Brilliant, amazing, good educational tool and, I'd say. yeah. And yesterday I went to the Tower of London. He's such a tourist, this man. Honestly, yeah, what, <laughs> what was that like? What was that like? Um, well, I could only see three exhibits because they weren't very wheelchair accessible. No, get out of here! Are you kidding me? No. Uh, the, well, they're old buildings, and I don't think wheelchair accessibility was thought of all those years ago well we need a stiff letter to your mp that's what you need i think a stiff letter to the king would do more I agree hey, look we're changing policy here can't be just can't be any better than that can it i well, think you're right i think you're absolutely right i mean yeah. that, that is a royal public building yeah Amazing, out and about as well. Uh, have you had a day out and about? Uh, no, I've, I, I'm concentrating on the show. But the, the other, th the other place we've been just now, just around the corner from Orcam, is Intel, and that's part of um, the Steam Trail. I couldn't see a lot of arts in there, but one of their very tiny little computers. It's a very tiny little box. Uh, it's going to be certified by Dolby soon which Ooh. I think Ooh, might, might open up some yeah. arts yeah. aspects to it. And yeah. So we'd come back to that. I think. It's only, well, it's about the size of my mobile phone. bit thicker and it contains virtually a computer. Wow, that's amazing. For folks that don't know what we're talking about, Intel is the world's biggest microprocessor manufacturer uh, and they're really, really pushing the boundaries. About, and of course, you're talking about steam and that's science, technology, engineering and mathematics. But arts are in there because it used to be called STEM. And now we've put the A in, the A for arts. And that's why we've got something for audio in there. Isn't that good? That's why Dolby are in. Well, that's, that's, it's, not, it's not official, Russell. The, the, they're hoping the certification will be announced quite soon well they heard it here first right you, you know right. They, they heard it here first JD it's, it's good <laughs> we're, we're in here first we get in there as well. <laughs> well it's amazing I love catching up with you guys as well how's it going there with the station talk to me talk to my listeners about your station JD uh, well we like our station it keeps chugging along but they do need a new desk yeah. T tell us about the desk you need there, JD. Uh, the desk is uh, probably from 1903, and uh, I have to wind it up every now and again. <laughs> Good old Marconi. Amazing desk. Oh, well, bless you. Uh, you do an amazing job if the equipment's that. It's all down to the skill of the broadcaster. Oh, uh, uh, yes. All down to the skill it's as well. Well, it's the skill of the DJ or the announcer, isn't it? Absolutely. All, always, always, always. It's been great catching up with you. This is one of my favourite items on our show. Uh, we're live at 3 o'clock each day, and I'm going to put this into the show as a pre-record. I love hooking up with you live. And just to prove it's live, it is 16 minutes past 11 on Thursday, the mm -hmm. 30th of March 2023. And you can't do that right. in a podcast. <laughs> You've said that with a good announcer's voice. I don't you're, have to repeat that. You're really good. What's your next track? Because we could introduce that here from you, live from London. Um, well, I don't know. I'm just going to push the button. Oh, that's what I like. I love that. I love that. I, I, you, you just, I, with me, you just don't know what's going to happen. Random I like selection. That. I know. We call you yes, DJ Dangerous. That's what we need to call you. <laughs> 
Oh, I like that. <laughs> DJ Dangerous. Uh, JD, great to talk to you. Uh, from, uh, yeah, from great to talk to you, mate. Chris and Will and uh, myself, Russell, here in London. Thanks very much. Have a great Thursday uh, afternoon to all your listeners there. And thanks so much for, for joining uh, our show and thanks for having us on your show.